Welcome to the Personal Pension Radio Podcast, where it's all about helping you complete your financial journey to retirement. Discover time-tested strategies and get unconventional insights into wealth building and retirement that actually work. Break away from the herd and go for the retirement you dream of. And now, here's your host, the income engineer, Craig Strom. All right. Thank you once again for joining me on Personal Pension Radio. Thank you for the download, downloading this onto your listening device, wherever you might be in your car, on your motorcycle, on your boat, on your walk in the woods with your dog during this uh, fantastic fall weather. I'm recording this here in the month of October, so we're enjoying a nice cool weather here in Southern California. I'm still Envious of those of you live in the East enjoying the really cool, crisp, almost Halloween weather. Love that. Thank you, though, for joining me. Really appreciate it. Also appreciate those who have gone to iTunes and SoundCloud and iHeartRadio and those places uh, from last week's episode, the feedback edition, where I asked if you wouldn't mind, go to iTunes, leave a review. Positive reviews would be nice. It'll save me on my therapy bills. Now, My mission is to deliver that retirement conversation that is missing in Wall Street today, that's missing on that Wall Street retirement planning conversation, is very one-sided. In short, Wall Street's answer to everything is invest more money, save more money, invest, invest, invest. If you want this, you need to invest more money. Wall Street has no financial incentive to teach the financial planning community people like myself, to teach you, listener, to take more money out of the Wall Street system. Hear that again. Wall Street has no financial incentive to teach me how to teach you to take more money out of the Wall Street system. So doesn't it make sense that a lot of the things that are out there for retirement income planning are centered around helping Wall Street keep more of your money in Wall Street? Right. I mean, that just makes sense. I mean, it just sounds very commonsensical. I just think I just made that one up. It sounds very common sense to me, but most people don't understand that Wall Street is truly focused on keeping your money in Wall Street. And therefore, the advice related to retirement income is one sided. So I learned this years and years ago. And I really started focusing on the retirement income distribution side of the conversation because the distribution side is the part that Wall Street really doesn't want me or other financial planners or for that matter, financial bloggers, financial entertainers, financial writers. They really don't want a lot of information out there on how to take more money out of the Wall Street system. And there's nothing truly evil about that. I mean, it's just a good business model to focus on keeping more money in your business. Wall Street's business is holding on to your money, right? So challenge accepted. That's what I do. I want to challenge the conventional wisdom that Wall Street retirement is done in a certain way. And today I'm actually going to cover something That really just, I don't know, it bugs the heck out of me, I guess you'd say. It really does bug me that so-called new age, new, you know, millennial friendly, you know, people on the interweb are basically regurgitating the same old stuff that's been around for decades, and maybe they don't even know it. Now, quick disclosure, I am not an attorney. I am not a CPA. I am a certified financial planner professional. All that being said... Please don't act on things that you hear on my show as if you're hearing advice for you specifically. Please don't act on things that you hear with financial entertainers or bloggers or uh, things on podcasts or TV. Please meet with a qualified financial planner. Please meet with someone to review your situation, someone who has a fiduciary obligation, an obligation to you to put you first. Then get out there and make some financial decisions, I hope. Get out there and get that done. Now, I will share before I jump in a deal of the week. Craig's deal of the week. This is a segment that when it comes up, I like to share places where I actually uh, continue my quest for lifestyle deflation. I love the idea of finding a deal. I really do enjoy finding a bargain. And uh, some of you listen to the show, you might know that I am a car guy. 
I actually have a car dealership license as a hobby, and I'm in a car club. I like Porsches. I like Porsches. Sounds really expensive. The reality is I like to find a great deal on an older high miles Porsche, and I end up being able to buy them, and nobody ever knows how little I actually buy them for, and then I sell them at a profit. Well, one of the cars that I got recently was missing or had a broken passenger airbag light. It's just that silly little light that they put in the cars since, you know, forever now that says, hey, the passenger airbag is on or off depending on how heavy the person or object is in your passenger seat. Well, this light in my Porsche was broken. Now, by the way, I've got an incredible price on the car itself but it had some cosmetic issues, and one of them was this little light. Well, Porsche, as you might imagine, if you buy it directly from them, it's about 50 bucks. This little dinky light, it's like 50 bucks, 42 bucks, 50 bucks, 42, all over the place. I couldn't find it any cheaper. So just about to buy the thing, and I figured, what the heck, I have some friends and Lo, you know, the uh, communities, Porsche communities, buy and sell communities on Facebook. I posted a message on one of these Porsche forums on Facebook and said, hey, I'm looking for this passenger airbag light. And it seems ridiculously expensive. Anybody out there can help. And within 15 or 20 minutes, somebody in that group said, I've got one for 20 bucks if you like it. So, Heck Yeah. I, I paid him $20. That included shipping. 20 bucks, and it arrived at my house the following week. It is exactly the light that goes with that car for 20 bucks. And he had it in his inventory. Whammo. Love it. Deal of the week. Now, segment one of my show has always been Watch Your Step. Watch Your Step refers to this idea that there is so much going on out there, as I've mentioned before, in the financial blogosphere, in the financial world, and the news markets in general, that the, these websites are just hungry, constantly, constantly hungry for content. And sometimes the content really is just not, it's not thought out. It's really not. It's just terrible content that's just filling space. I like to read through... Frankly, I'll be honest, sometimes I skim through some of that stuff because my uh, crud detector goes up very quickly when I'm reading some of this stuff because I can tell right away it's the same old rehashed, you know, incomplete information or whatever it might be, and I'll just skim over it real fast. But if I see something that I think is important to bring to your attention, that you might want to really watch your step before you step in some of this crap, I want to let you know. So that's where it came from. Watch your step. In the last episode, I actually mentioned that it's so, so important that you keep track of your 401k after you may roll it over. If you retire or leave a company and you roll over that 401k, you have got to keep track of that for asset protection, for liability protection reasons. You've got to go back and listen to that episode. If you have a 401k that you want to roll over, if you have questions about your 401k, an IRA, any of that, please contact me. Absolutely shameless plug. Craig with a K at craigstrom.com. K-R-A-I-G at craigstrom, S-T-R-O-M.com. Happy to help, but you've got to pay close attention to your 401k and the origins of said 401k. Now, a reminder also in this episode, I want to make sure just I'm going to continue to remind you, it kind of blows me away, 70% of Americans are rolling over their 401k without any advisory help, right? Without any advisory help. In many cases, the 401k is the largest investment financial asset someone might have after their house, right? Then... If you're doing your own financial planning, why don't you just simply do your own brain surgery next time? Why don't you just go ahead and take care of your own dental work next time, right? Please, this is serious. Don't make those kinds of enormous financial decisions without at least consulting with a financial planner. There are many financial planners available out there that will work on a consultative basis. Go buy an hour or two with a certified financial planner. 
You could do that with me. You could do that with any number of certified financial planners. But please, you're about to make the biggest decision of your life to roll over for perhaps your 401k. Get some advisory help first. Right? I think it's so funny that people will not go out and get a financial planner. Oh, those financial planners are too expensive. I, I don't have the money for that. And then they go hire a realtor to sell their house, and they, they end up paying $20,000 in realtor fees. Well, th- then you should have sold your own house, right? I mean, you get, see how crazy that is. Before you roll over your 401k, Go speak with a financial planner. He or she will most likely offer you an hour of a consultation free. I do that all the time. You never know if it's a good fit until you sit down for 30 minutes or 60 minutes together. And then you can decide if you should actually pay for a few more hours of that person's time. I'm always willing to be that person to give you that consult. Craig at CraigStrom.com. Now, in this episode, watch your step. I want to bring this to your attention because this is not a topic that I will dive into deeply because it is a very specific to your situation topic. But it's this idea that Americans are losing literally, not figuratively, literally trillions of dollars taking Social Security income at the wrong time. Before you make a social security or a pension choice, if you're lucky enough to have a pension, only 7% of Americans maybe nowadays have a pension, but most everybody has access to social security. But hear me again on this. This is an article I read recently. This is what I'm saying. Watch your step. This is a huge pile of mess that you don't want to make this mistake. Americans are losing trillions of dollars taking social security incorrectly at the wrong time. Retirement income is all of your income sources and Social Security can be engineered into your retirement income plan. Contact a financial planner. Contact me for crying out loud. We're here together right now on the podcast, connected. I feel like we have a bond. Craig with a K at CraigStrom.com. Before you make a Social Security or a pension mistake, contact a CFP, hopefully me, and we can talk. Now, Segment two is my listener questions and client questions and my personal observations. And in the last episode, I called it the feedback episode. We went through some of my uh, scary and helpful reviews on iTunes and various other places. Please go back, review that, read that, right? I, I, I really actually appreciate the feedback. If you've got good, solid feedback, send it to me. If it's critical, How about we do this? You know, kind of the way we teach our kids that we should actually deal with people directly. If you've got good, solid feedback for me, send it to me personally. I give out my email for crying out loud. Craig with a K at CraigStrom.com. If you want to go back and listen to that episode where you kind of a therapy session with me going through my feedback, it's on the last episode called the Feedback Edition. Now, in this episode, these are just my observations personally this week. First, I want to give everybody a quick, I had a, a, one of my clients ask me about it, a quick Apple Watch update. Uh, a few months back, I purchased new life insurance from John Hancock. By the way, I love helping people with life insurance. So I got some new life insurance with John Hancock because I could also get an Apple Watch 4, the fourth edition Apple Watch, as part of my life insurance program. And if I stayed healthy and active like I am generally, my watch would be practically free. Right, it would come down to like ten bucks a month for this very expensive watch, and my it's included kind of wrapped into my insurance premium. And if I stay healthy, my insurance premium actually goes down. And here's what's happened: I am a very active person. I keep track of all my steps thanks to the Apple Watch, of course. And I have achieved platinum status, which means that I get some really cool bonuses and and prizes, some uh, spiffs that come with it. Uh, So today, for example, I got to spin the award, the the reward wheel, and I got another $5 Amazon gift card. It's not huge, but since I got it, 
I've had $40 in gift cards. $40 in gift cards. That's not too bad for having the watch basically included in the price of my insurance. And I've got new term life insurance. My life insurance wasn't any more expensive through John Hancock. I just have an opportunity to actually make it less expensive. So if you would like to look at your own life insurance, please send me an email, craig at craigstrom.com. I work with 20 plus different companies so I can help you get a variety of different uh, perspectives on life insurance. But if you want to get your own Apple Watch, you could actually come through me to do it. I'll help you through the program. I'll help you through the whole process. Craig at craigstrom.com. Now, in this episode, I really want to concentrate on this idea, and you saw the title in my of the podcast, The Rule of 25. The Rule of 25. Okay, what the heck is that? Now, of course, I know what it is, but it, it really hit me that this weekend, because I enjoy listening to podcasts focused on the FIRE movement. For those of you who don't know what it is, the FIRE movement, financial Financial independence retire early. Fire. It's there's a number of new age, millennial friendly, cool, and hip podcasts out there that talk about the fire movement for retirement. Retire early, right? Okay, great. This weekend I was finishing up a very complicated, detailed woodworking project for a friend. So I had lots of time to listen to podcasts. The fire podcast is one that I actually enjoy, right? Perhaps it's this focus on living frugally. Now I say podcast. There's multiple FIRE, Financial Independence Retire Early podcasts. There's multiple choice. So I'm listening to several um, that are, that I listen to my podcast at one and a half X, right? So at least one and a half X. So I can listen to, I can, I can absorb quite a bit of content by listening to it faster. So I listen to several. Right? So perhaps it's just the focus on frugal living that really grabs me. Right, So when you think about retiring early, well, if you can live very frugally and happy and comfortable on less overall income and stuff, well, then you can retire early, whatever retirement means to you. Right, It feels like these fire podcasts and fire movements and fire conversations – it feels like this hip, new age, millennial-friendly concept. You know, like I feel like the tone of most fire shows is that this is new and different. But it's not. It is not new and different. It really hit me this weekend. It really bugged the heck out of me that these, you know, basically millennial directed young people, you don't have to work the in your entire life. You can retire early. Try this rule, this financial topic. One of the shows I heard was talking about the rule of 25 instead of the rule of the 4% rule, right? Now, I'm not going to mention the show because I'm in a bit of a rant mode. It's a good show. I love the idea of the fire concepts. I don't want to disparage the overall message of financial independence, retire early, fire, right? But for some baseline we need to start with a 4% rule and what the, 25, the rule of 25 is. Now, first, the 4% rule was proposed back in 1994 by William Bengen. William Bengen is a financial planner in California. Essentially, in a nutshell, it's a drawdown strategy. The drawdown strategy. So basically, if you have a million dollars in a retirement income bucket and you take out 4%, 40,000 bucks in retirement, your total balance, you know, 4% of your total balance each year, you might not, maybe, probably won't, could be possibly not run out of money. Did you hear all of the uncertainty that I could put in there, right? The 4% rule is extremely uncertain says maybe probably you might not run out of money before you die. Now, numerous articles today and reports by economists and financial experts today say the 4% rule does not work. It doesn't work. 
the financial world has changed since 1994. People are living longer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The investment world is not the same as the 1994 time frame when Bengen's plan hit the retirement planning store shelves because it's been the thing for all that time for nearly 30 years. Today, the safe withdrawal rate is hotly debated. Hotly debated in the Wall Street and financial community. The bottom line, it depends. It depends on lifestyle withdrawal expectations. It depends on the sequence of investment returns. Folks, if you haven't heard that phrase from your financial advisor, if you don't know what sequence of investment returns means or the sequence risk means, you got to work with somebody else. You need someone who specializes in retirement income, and that is a buzzword to look for. Sequence of investment returns. And the big one that it depends on is how long will you live? Living longer means that you need a lower draw rate if you use the old Wall Street-only plan for retirement. So back to my, my workshop audio selections over the weekend, right? I said I was listening to the new HIP FIRE Financial Independence Retire Early podcast, one of several, right? So I'm not gonna say which one. The host mentions the 4% rule, And then suggest the rule of 25 may be more appropriate. Huh, okay. The host mentions the 4% rule and then said, hey, the rule of 25 might be more appropriate instead. A better way of thinking about fire. Start with how much you need and work back to your number. The rule of 25, folks, is exactly the same as the 4% rule. It's exactly the same. It's just the math is backwards. If you need $60,000 per year to live on, $60,000 times 25 is $1.5 million. If you take $1.5 million times 4%, lo and behold, that's $60,000. It's the 4% rule flipped around backwards with a different phrase. It sounds cool. The rule of 25. It's the 4% rule. So if you can get by on $48,000 a year, living frugally, 48,000 times 25, you just need $1.2 million. For the record, take $1.2 million by 4%. That's $48,000. It is exactly the same calculation. But what are they not factoring in? Aside from just regurgitating the same old Wall Street stuff that isn't working today, these new, hip, young, millennial-focused conversations, they are not factoring in the most important piece of retirement income planning, and that is time. They are not factoring in time. These financial bloggers and entertainers are essentially regurgitating the same old stuff that Wall Street has been pitching for decades, right? A 40-year-old should never, ever, by the way, the person on the Financial the Fire podcast was talking about, uh, was interviewing somebody who retired in his 40s. Great, but a 40-something person should never, ever use the 4% as a withdrawal strategy because the longer you have to live, the lower that old-fashioned withdrawal strategy has to be, right? You've got to take out a heck of a lot less or put a heck of a lot more in the bucket, right? You've got to have way more money in the bucket. And if you're in your 40s, the draw rate number is closer to 25. And that means your factor now, it's not the rule of 25, it's the rule of 50, right? It's the rule of 38 or 40, whatever it is, right? That now all of a sudden, all it is is these same rehashed approaches to William Bengen's old 1994 4% rule that does not work today. It's been proven multiple times by multiple researchers, by multiple economists, financial uh, planners. It doesn't work. So here they are regurgitating the same thing, right? Now, to be fair, there are several 
financial podcasts and bloggers and such that do talk about a more engineered approach to early retirement. They encourage listeners to have passive revenue streams, for example. But let's face it, if you've got passive revenue streams, that's a job, right? That's still a job. Even a passive income generator needs to be managed, and that's okay. I'm not suggesting that retirement means you stop working altogether. No, retirement is very different today for a lot of folks as they look at it. Retiring early and using the old, outdated, and wrong Wall Street-focused rules of the past is a recipe for disaster. So what's, what's my big idea? What's Craig, the income engineer's big idea, my solution? It's the same as always, folks. Meet with a qualified, certified, hopefully, financial planner to discuss your specific situation. Don't do your own brain surgery. Don't rely on uh, a quick passing article or podcast that talks about the rule of 25. It sounds so new and hip the way they describe it. It's total hogwash. It's the same old stuff. Don't rely on that to make an enormous decision in your life. Meet with a qualified, certified financial planner. Even if you just pay for a couple hours with a certified financial planner, it would be better than doing your own financial brain surgery. So my offer always stands. I offer all of my listeners, everybody that I meet, you get a complimentary assessment, a consultation with me. You get 60 minutes of my time. And if you want to go further than that, we can talk about how I get paid and how it would be appropriate to work together if it's even appropriate to work together. I don't know. The consultation is as much about me learning as whether or not it's a good idea to work with you as it is the other way around, right? And by the way, if a certified financial planner that you talk to starts discussing the 4% rule, and, and how it might apply to your world, he or she may not be the right person to talk to. Those are buzzwords. Monte Carlo simulations, 4% rule, the rule of 25, things like that. Those are buzzwords for a broken, old, outdated, incomplete retirement planning system. So if you're hearing those kinds of things, you're not, in my opinion, you're not talking to a retirement income planning specialist, someone who understands that it is an engineered approach with so many different aspects that need to be ad addressed that are outside the typical Wall Street mantra. So that's going to wrap it up for today. Please, I made an offer, two different offers in here. If you want an assessment, it's complimentary with me. Don't miss it. Send me an email, craig at craigstrom.com. And... Christmas is coming, folks. I'm going to give you a couple of ideas. Christmas is coming up fast. If you'd like, a, these are some, these are two, I think, amazing ideas because it's not, they're not my ideas, actually. These are from clients. So I have clients who have done two things. One, one client, actually husband and wife, they got their kids estate plans. So what they did is, because you might have heard me say this, estate plans, living trusts, wills, powers of attorney. I have a special arrangement through the law firm that I work with to do an extremely good, valuable trust and estate plan at a discounted rate for my listeners, for my friends and family and listeners. So Christmas gift, Hanukkah gift, here's what one of my clients did, actually several now. They got their kids estate plans for Christmas. Their kids are grown and having kids and getting married. And so they did an estate plan for themselves, mom and dad, as a gift to the kids. Because you might have heard me say this. Why do you need an estate plan as a husband and wife? You really don't unless you love your kids. If you love your kids and your grandkids and you don't want them to have any problems with the courts or probate or all that hassle, get them a living trust. And then get them one for their young family as well. So I'm working on several right now that were gifts from parents to their children so they can have a living trust. That's a great Christmas or Hanukkah gift. The other one is, 
the gift of life insurance, right? So instead of just simply buying your kids an Apple Watch, how about getting a life insurance policy with John Hancock, with your friend Craig, the income engineer helping you get it done? We can get you an Apple Watch through John Hancock's life insurance. So you give the gift of life insurance protection to your kids and it comes with an Apple Watch. I did that for my daughter, for example. She's got her Apple Watch 4 on all the time and she's keeping up with me. I think she might be a little behind. I think I might be a little ahead of her on my platinum status. She is platinum status as well. That's the idea. Holidays are coming. I would love to help you with your estate plan. Love to help you get a plan for your kids and to get everybody that you want to take care of and protect, to get them an Apple Watch and some additional life insurance or brand new life insurance for that matter. I'm here to help. And don't forget, let's get your consultation going for your personal retirement income journey. I look forward to it, folks. Have a fantastic day wherever you are, whatever you're doing, listening to this. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for listening to the Personal Pension Radio podcast. We took notes for you, so if you missed any part of the show, you can find a full transcript of each episode at personalpensionradio.com. Be sure to download your free retirement income crisis report at personalpensionradio.com. While you're at it, we would appreciate some iTunes love. Please leave us a fantastic rating on iTunes by going to personalpensionradio forward slash iTunes. Thanks again for listening. Now for the disclosure. <clears throat> Information presented is for educational purposes only and is not intended for solicitation, sale or purchase of any security or financial product. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and your tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed here. The term personal pension refers to a marketing name designed to educate future retirees and retirees about the economic principles behind creating their own pension-like income. The term personal pension is not intended to be confused with a defined benefit pension plan offered by an employer or by a government entity.